Is New York City, once the epicenter of the American dream, now a cautionary tale of policy failure? This question is becoming more relevant by the day as we observe the ongoing exodus from the Big Apple. The hustle and bustle of the city that was once a magnet for talent and ambition, is now seeing a significant outflow of residents and businesses. The reasons behind this shift are not hard to discern. The city's high taxes have become a burden too heavy for many to bear. Added to this is the alarming rise in crime rates, which has left many questioning their safety. And let's not forget the struggling education system, failing to provide the quality education that the city's children deserve. These factors combined paint a grim picture of a city losing its shine. But how did the city that never sleeps become the city that never stops losing residents? In NYC, your wallet might be the first to feel the pinch. Now let's dive deeper into the financial aspect of living in the Big Apple. New York City, famed for its towering skyscrapers and bustling streets, has a less glamorous side, a staggering cost of living that can make even the most robust bank accounts quiver. The city's high tax rates are a significant factor. Income tax rates in New York can reach nearly 9% for top earners, while other states like Texas and Florida offer a stark contrast with zero state income tax. And it's not just the wealthy who are impacted. Middle-class families, the backbone of any society, also bear the brunt. They find themselves caught in a relentless cycle of high taxes and the high cost of living, leaving little room for financial growth or comfort. For small businesses, the situation is even more challenging. They are subjected to a myriad of taxes from corporate to sales taxes. And let's not forget the property taxes, which are among the highest in the nation. This financial strain often hampers their ability to expand, hire more staff, or even stay afloat during economic downturns. When we compare this to more conservative states like Texas and Florida, we see a different picture. Lower taxes and a generally lower cost of living make these states far more appealing to both individuals and businesses. For instance, the cost of housing is significantly lower, with the median home price in Texas being around two-thirds less than that in New York City. And it's not just about the numbers, it's about the quality of life. When the cost of living consumes such a large chunk of income, it leaves less for other things, less for recreation, less for savings, and most importantly, less for the future. It's a financial pressure cooker, and it's causing people, businesses, and opportunities to escape in search of greener, more affordable pastures. So is it any wonder that people are packing their bags and heading to more affordable pastures? Safety is a fundamental right, but is it a luxury in New York City? In the bustling metropolis that never sleeps, a disturbing trend is unfolding. Crime rates are on the rise. The city that once held the moniker of the safest big city in America is now grappling with an unsettling surge in criminal activity. Comparatively, in cities where conservative principles guide the governance, crime rates have either remained steady or even decreased. A stark contrast that brings us to question, what's behind the escalating crime rates in New York City? It's impossible to ignore the correlation between these rising crime rates and certain liberal policies that have been implemented. The most controversial among them, the call to defund the police. This policy, although well-intentioned by its advocates, has resulted in a significant decrease in police funding and manpower. The aftermath? An emboldened criminal element, a stretched-thin police force, and a city in the throes of a crime wave. It's becoming increasingly apparent that the decision to defund the police is having unintended, albeit foreseeable, consequences. But it's not just about the numbers. It's about the people, the everyday New Yorker who now has to look over their shoulder more often, the parent who worries about their child's safety on their way to school, the elderly citizen who now thinks twice before stepping out of their home after sundown. These are the real-life implications of rising crime rates. They paint a picture of a city where safety is becoming a luxury, not a guarantee. And when safety turns into a luxury, it's not just the crime rates that rise but also fear, uncertainty and mistrust. It's time to rethink. To reassess the policies that have led us down this path, it's time to restore the promise of safety to the hard-working people of New York City. Because when law and order becomes a question rather than a guarantee, it's time to rethink our policies. Every child deserves a good education, but is NYC delivering on this promise? Picture for a moment the bustling streets of New York City. The iconic skyline, the hustle and bustle, it's a city that never sleeps. But beneath this vibrant exterior, the city's education system is in a state of crisis. The reality is a stark contrast to the city's shining image. Failing schools, 
low graduation rates, and an apparent disregard for the importance of quality education have become the hallmark of the Big Apple's education system. It's a grim picture, isn't it? And it's not just a problem for the city's children, it's a problem for all of us, because our children are our future. They are the ones who will shape our world tomorrow. But how can they do so if they're not equipped with the tools they need today? Now let's take a detour and compare this to some conservative states. Take Texas, for instance. Here school choice policies have been implemented, giving parents the power to choose the best education for their children. Such policies have led to improved education outcomes, higher graduation rates, better test scores, and students who are more prepared for the challenges of the future. These aren't just numbers on a page, they're real tangible results. Evidence that when we prioritize education, when we put the needs of our students first, we can make a difference. A profound, lasting difference that will shape the course of their lives and in turn, the future of our nation. So why then is New York City failing its children? Why is it that, in a city renowned for its opportunities, so many children are being left behind? The answer, it seems, lies in the policies. Policies that prioritize bureaucracy over the needs of students. Policies that stifle innovation and choice rather than encourage it. Our children are our future. Shouldn't we prioritize policies that ensure their success? We owe it to them and to ourselves to provide an education system that equips them for the challenges of tomorrow. An education system that delivers on the promise of a brighter, more prosperous future. Because every child deserves a good education, and it's time we started acting like it. Businesses are the backbone of any economy, but are they being supported in NYC? In the heart of the city that never sleeps, a quiet exodus is taking place. Businesses, large and small, are packing up, turning off the lights for the last time, and leaving New York City. They're leaving behind the towering skyscrapers, the hustle and bustle, and the high taxes and stringent regulations. New York City, once a beacon for businesses worldwide, has become a challenging place to operate. Skyrocketing taxes and heavy-handed regulations are pushing businesses to their limits. It's like a heavyweight boxing match, but the businesses are in the ring without any gloves. They're being hit left and right with tax increases and regulation changes, all while trying to keep their doors open and employees paid. But while New York City is tightening the noose around its businesses, other states are rolling out the red carpet. States with conservative leadership like Texas and Florida are offering a breath of fresh air. They're saying, come here, bring your business and we'll let you do what you do best, create jobs and boost our economy. They're slashing taxes, easing regulations and creating a business-friendly environment. And it's working. Businesses are flocking to these states, bringing jobs and economic growth with them. They're setting up shop in cities with lower taxes, fewer regulations and a more supportive business environment. They're finding that they can breathe easier, operate more efficiently and ultimately be more successful. This exodus from New York City is a clear signal. It's a signal that businesses are tired of being overtaxed and overregulated. It's a signal that they're looking for places where they can thrive, not just survive. It's a signal that, if New York City doesn't change its ways, it could be left in the dust. When businesses leave, jobs follow. Can NYC afford to lose more? The answer, quite simply, is no. But unless something changes, this business exodus will continue, and the city that never sleeps might just find itself in a deep economic slumber. The exodus from NYC is not a myth, it's a reality. That's right, folks. It's not an urban legend but a cold, hard truth. The Big Apple has been losing its shine and people are packing up their dreams, their lives and moving away. Let's delve into some telling statistics. A recent study reveals that in the last five years New York City has waved goodbye to nearly a million residents. A startling number, isn't it? The preferred destinations? Smaller, more affordable cities like Austin, Texas and Nashville, Tennessee. What's more, the sunshine state of Florida has seen a significant influx of former New Yorkers seeking lower taxes and a more relaxed lifestyle. Now you may ask, what's the big deal? People move all the time. True, but when we're talking about a city as significant as New York City, the implications are far-reaching and potentially detrimental. Economically, the city stands to lose big. Let's not forget that those million people contribute to the city's tax base, fuel its economy, and drive its cultural vibrancy. Their departure leaves a gaping hole, one that's not easily filled. And it's not just about the economy. The city's social fabric is at stake too. New York is known for its diversity, its melting pot of cultures. But with people leaving in such large numbers that rich tapestry risks being torn apart. What's also concerning is the trend. 
It's not a one-off incident, but a steady, continuous exodus. And if this continues, the city's demographic landscape will change dramatically. So, what does this mean for New York City's future? It's a question that demands serious thought. With the current trend, the city faces the risk of becoming a hollow shell of its former self, losing its economic vitality, and perhaps even its cultural identity. So, we find ourselves at a crossroads. The city that never sleeps seems to be drifting into a deep slumber. With so many people leaving, what does the future hold for NYC? That's the million dollar question. And answering it requires not just reflection, but action. Policies matter. They shape our cities and our lives. They are the unseen hands that guide the course of our communities, and their impact cannot be overstated. Let's take a moment to explore how conservative policies have fostered growth and prosperity in other parts of our great nation. Cities and states that have embraced these principles have seen significant positive change. Take Texas, for example, where lower taxes have led to an economic boom. Businesses have flocked to the Lone Star State, bringing with them a wealth of jobs and opportunities. Or consider Florida, where school choice has revolutionized the education system. Parents are empowered to select the best educational path for their children whether that be public, private, or charter schools. The result? Improved academic performance and happier, more engaged students. And let's not forget the importance of supporting our law enforcement. In cities and states where this is a priority, crime rates have been kept in check, creating safer, more peaceful communities. But it's not just about the numbers. It's about the lives that are touched by these policies. It's about the small business owner who can afford to expand because of lower taxes. It's about the single mother who can send her child to a better school because of school choice. It's about the elderly couple who can sleep soundly at night knowing their neighborhood is safe. It's important to remember that these aren't just conservative policies, they're American policies. They represent the values that our great nation was built on, freedom, opportunity, and the belief in the power of the individual. So as we consider the state of cities like New York, Let's remember the power of policies. Let's remember that the choices made by our leaders have real, tangible impacts on the lives of everyday citizens. Conservative policies aren't just theories, they're proven solutions. They offer a blueprint for success, a roadmap to prosperity. It's time we took a closer look at their potential and consider how they could shape the future of our cities, and indeed, our nation. Change starts with you. Remember that phrase because it embodies the power that each of us holds. It's the power to influence, to shape, to mold, the power to alter the course of history. And right now, New York City needs that power more than ever. You've seen the state of the Big Apple and it's not as shiny as it once was. The high cost of living, the rising crime rates, the education crisis, the business exodus. These are not just headlines or statistics. They are real issues that real people are facing every day. And they are the result of policies that have been put in place, policies that have failed to serve the people they were meant to protect. So what can we do? Where can we start? We start with involvement. We start by stepping into the arena of local politics. It's not just about the big national elections, it's about the school board meetings, the city council votes, the state legislature decisions. These are the places where policies are shaped, where the future of our city is determined. And when we step into that arena, we need to vote for conservative policies. Policies that prioritize fiscal responsibility, that champion small businesses, that value the rule of law. Policies that put education first, that protect our streets, that make New York City a place where people want to live, not leave. Think about the potential benefits of these policies for New York City. Lower taxes could make it more affordable for families and businesses, Stronger law enforcement could make our neighborhoods safer. Better education could equip our children for the future. These are not just conservative ideals, they are common sense solutions that can help turn the tide. So let's take that power that we hold, that power to influence, to shape, to mold, and let's use it. Let's use it to rebuild the city that we love, to restore the shine to the Big Apple. The future of NYC is in your hands, make your vote count.